Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. We're here live. Back weeknight, 7 o'clock Central. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Jim Mars, an old friend of mine, the first guy to teach a college-level course on the JFK assassination, the crime beat reporter, back when, basically when JFK got killed for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Uh, he looks a lot younger than he actually is. Uh, he's my everybody's favorite uh, historian. I don't know, man. You are you are a living legend, but I guess you've been involved since you were really, really young. You even went to the same nightclub that uh, Jack Ruby would hang out in, and you've had a whole bunch of New York Times, you know, top 10 bestsellers, TV shows made out of what you've done. Uh, the movie JFK, based on your book, worked on that with Oliver Stone. Just an amazing guy, good friend of mine, good to see you. You're going to be speaking at Brave New Books. Uh, Population Control is one of your most important books, and I've read most of them. How Corporate Owners Are Killing Us, Jim Mars, best-selling author of Rule by Secrecy and the Trillion Dollar Conspiracy. And he joins us to break this down. But first, I want to go to this report and get his take on it. Uh, Tampa recruiting offices evacuated due to threat. Unspecified shooting threat comes one week after Chattanooga shooting. Joe Biggs and uh, Josh Owen shot the video of smugglers at 60 yards away, bringing in masses of drugs, basically during Trump's visit to the border. That was on Drudge and made national news last night. Now, Joe... Uh, is talking to the recruiting offices, got them to go on record. They've evacuated all the Tampa facilities, won't let them be armed, won't let citizens come stand out front. Uh, and now this has happened. Here's Joe Biggs' report with the text, the tweets, all the evidence, red linked at Infowars.com. Here it is. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, about 40 minutes ago, I got a tweet from a friend who lives in Georgia whose son lives down in Florida and roommates with a recruiter. Now, this recruiter says that they have been ordered to evacuate all the recruiting stations in the Tampa area due to a threat. Now, I talked about this earlier in the week when I was standing guard in front of the recruiter's office in South Park Meadows in the south part of Austin. One of the recruiters from one of the departments came out and said that they were getting threats in Las Vegas and in Florida. Now it looks like they have taken it to another level with a direct threat in Tampa Bay. So these guys have evacuated. And I know this because I personally have called numerous locations in the Tampa area and gotten zero answers. The phone just rings and or goes to a voice recording. So this is happening right now. We're going to keep our eyes on it. Stay alert if you're in the Tampa area, if you have the ability to swing by one of these places and see if they are indeed open or if they are vacant, give us a a tip on the video below. I'm Joe Biggs with Infowars.com. Joe Biggs doing a great job of breaking news stories uh, every day, just ferreting around. It really has a nose for investigative reporting and also tracking the Internet, uh, which I know you teach journalism as well. I tell you, mainstream media doesn't do its job anymore. That's giving rise to the new media that's almost about to supplant the old dinosaur media. And here you are with a leg in each world, population control, how corporate owners are killing us. Available at Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere. Mr. Mars, good to have you here with us. Let me tell you what the uh, uh, greatest irony is on this gun thing, okay? Here we've got tr trained military people who've been trained on firearms, but they won't let them go armed <laughs> to protect themselves. But the greatest irony is, is that you'll find in my new book, Population Control, that uh, the United States of America over the past couple of decades is the arms merchant of the world. We provide 78%, according to congressional records, of all the arms sold to everybody around the world, including, of course, the ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all the rest of them. And half the global, half the global uh, spend, expenditure is just on us. Yes. So we provide 78% of all the arms in, to people in the world. And then we look at Russia and China. Russia's 5%, China's 3%. So we, we sell more arms in Russia and China combined all around the world. And yet here in our own country, they want to take guns away from everybody. It's amazing. Aren't you a veteran yourself? Yes, I was in the Army during Vietnam. What do you make of the situation where we now know they're, they've put 200 plus thousand veterans on don't treat list and just say go die. We've known for a year and they just keep doing it. It seems like I thought if we exposed evil, a lot of times it would get turned around back in your day or even when I was on air 20 years ago. Now the evil comes out, the IRS persecutes people a thousand times, times Nixon literally, and don't get in trouble. Well, hey, come on, look at it, Alex. The uh, uh, veterans 
are the most dangerous group to them because not only are veterans patriotic, but veterans uh, have weapons and know how to use them. Common sense. You brought it up. I don't want to bring up a story I'm in. It just shows the insanity. We can put it on screen if they have it. Yesterday, I remember it was two days ago, Salon, that basically takes White House talking points and regurgitates them, came out and said that the Planned Parenthood video is a hoax. Planned Parenthood admits it's real. And that I'm basically the bad guy, that Margaret Sanger was not a racist. There it is. Conspiracy theorists have hijacked the GOP. What happens when Trump, Cruz, and Carson start following Alex Jones' lead? And it goes, the Planned Parenthood hoax is a case study in how we're deceptive. It's they admit hoax. this. It's not a hoax. You know, the, the, well, we're into uh, we're, we're into a Nostradamus, the famous uh, 16th century seer, said that we're going to go into a time period when black is white and white is black, up is down, down is up, and believe me, that's that's where we are, right? Peace is war. <laughs> well, well, you've you've actually written a book that a lot of it was about Margaret Sanger and the Nazi influence in the U.S. Right, and we even have some slides in there. Some of it's in this book. Tell us about Margaret Sanger, since they say she was a loving person. Well, yeah, and I'm the racist. You you have to go back and understand about the eugenicist movement. Okay, eugenics came up in the late 1800s, and it was basically started right here in the United States. In fact, in California, and was supported by some of the wealthiest, biggest name people in the country, the Harrimans. The Mellons, the Rockefellers, and and eugenics is basically let's uh, uh, have the perfect race. You know, if you had the wrong skin color or the wrong bone structure or your IQ wasn't up to their standards, uh, by the 1930s, most every state had sterilization laws, okay? And you could be sterilized involuntarily. Well, what happened was is that the Germans got hold of that and said, hey, that's pretty good, and the Nazis took power and they carried it to its logical extreme, which is, well, we have some people like Jews and gypsies that we think uh, uh, might dirty the gene pool. So they just said, we'll just kill them. And they had World War II and we had the Holocaust. And the people in the world went, wait a minute, you know, we can't just go around killing people. So today, if you'll talk to these globalists, they're all still very much eugenicists. And they will say flat out, in fact, they have it etched in stone in Georgia, at the Georgia Guidestones. Ted Turner. He says, we want to maintain the human population at 500 million. That's a 90 plus percent reduction. Right, which begs begs the question, well, wait a minute, what's supposed to happen to the other 7 billion of us? And more importantly, who's going to decide who stays and who goes? And how are they going to get rid of us? Well, the Nazis show that uh, they'll run into trouble if they try to just shoot people and hang them and kill them. So what they're doing is they are slowly thinning the human herd through bad food bad air, bad water, bad vaccines. Do you know the third leading cause of death in America today after heart attacks and cancer is conventional medical treatment? I didn't know that. <laughs> I want to get into your book. It's simply amazing and it's solution-based to understand what to avoid. And, and, and is along the line that I'm focusing on exposing the breakaway civilization is poisoning us so that they can basically just phase us out and then they can... And profit from it. And profit while they do it. That's the genius of these people. They're not dumb. And there's kind of an argument. If we put up with it, maybe we deserve it. But I want to ask you a selfish question because I grew up hearing how great Texas was and how we were the smartest, the toughest, the most honorable, blah, blah, blah. Lord knows a lot of bad comes out of Texas, too. But now that I've studied history, traveled the world, I do know that Texas yeah. is certainly um, exceptional. The military has always tried to recruit as much as it can out of Texas, saying they found in combat and operations, Texans on average, uh, uh, you know, make the best soldiers. And then it's, I notice it's Texans so much that are resisting the New World Order, but it was Texans that also killed Kennedy, who also do really nasty stuff. So dark side and light side, Texas seems to be a real crossroads. And now Texas is opposing so much of the New World Order. You're a classic Texan, go way back. You're a Texas, you know, just standard great Texas guy. What do you think about Texas before we go to break? Uh, well, Texas is it. I, I, I'm like you, Alex. I've traveled the world. I've been to Tibet. I've been to the Middle East. I've been to Europe. I've been to Canada. I've been all over. And there's some prettier places. There's some very picturesque places. But I've never found a place in the world that I think measures up to Texas. Texas, we've got it all, and uh, we've, we've got beaches, we got mountains, we got forests, we got plains, we got... But the people, too, because if you go back to Texas history... people, yes, 
and you go back to the people who broke away from Mexico, and I'm not talking about the white settlers. I'm talking about Juan Seguin and the Hispanic people that lived here. And I know, I don't know, at least in my life growing up in Texas, uh, everybody got along. Everything's good. And you mentioned some of the bad stuff that came, like Kennedy, okay? Uh, let me tell you something. Some of, the, some of those people involved in some of the bad stuff were not even truly Texans. One of the things that's really griped me for years is the fact that the Bush family, uh, they say, well, Claims they're from Texas. Well, they're Texas oil men. No, no, no. They came from Connecticut. They're just Yankee carpetbaggers. <laughs> and you're right. Texas has always had a military history that we should be proud of. Uh, I know during the late great uh, war between the states, it was Robert E. Lee, one of the most famous generals in the world. He said, when the going gets tough, I call on my Texans. And I, unfortunately, you know, today we've all gotten fat and soft and, and easy, but I think it's time to buckle down and pay attention. To well, I mean, just look how much Texas has given the globalist resistance. Yeah. And then look at how the feds are cutting off the funding, everything that comes from our money anyways. But we're creating a gold bullion repository. <laughs> Texas just took its gold back. I'm telling you, <laughs> Texas is special. We're taking, we're taking a few steps now. and We need to keep going. All right, let's get into your book when we come back. It's good to see you. Tom flies, brother. <laughs> Too much time. You're awesome. Here we go. We're here. Jim Mars is our guest. In the next segment, I'm going to ask him what the globalist end game is. And does he agree that he's got a weird feeling like everybody else does and that things are coming to a head? But I haven't read your book yet. I've scanned over it. It looks like a page turner. I'm going to read it on the airplane over to Spain uh, next week. But population control, how corporate owners are killing us. Jim Mars, best-selling author. This is a short segment, long segment coming up. What do you want to tackle first about the premeditated plan to kill us and make money off doing it? Well, I, I think the key thing here is you've got to understand, and I use quotes from many people, uh, and I chart the, uh, their activities. We've got a short segment here, so I'll just put it in a nutshell. Take your time. We can go okay. to the next. The, this, is all, this ties into everything issue that you deal with, Alex, and all the people who follow you. This has gone beyond politics. This has gone beyond philosophy or debate. This is self-defense. These people want you dead, and uh, they're working at it. And uh, if you care anything about the safety and well-being of your family, your loved ones, you better read my book, you better study, you better listen to Alex, and you better find out what they're doing to you so that you can have a countermeasure. So you've researched it deeply, and that's, I mean, they're just open. It's like Bayer knowingly putting HIV for 10 years in hemophiliac's blood product, and then it came out, they knew it and liked it. Well, let me quote from Prince Philip, uh, a leading globalist, okay, the head of the Windsors over there in England. He says, um, if I'm reincarnated, I would like to come back as a deadly virus to help solve the overpopulation problem. That's right. In other words, he wants to kill us. Now, how about he goes first? Uh, yeah, that's what I say. Uh, let him take the first step. But it, it, and but here's the whole thing. It's all based on a phony premise. All these globalists, you, Bill Gates, uh, you know, uh, Ted, Warren Buffett, Ken Turner, Warren Buffett. You listen to any of them, they'll tell you that the overriding problem in the world today is overpopulation. Too many people, okay? Now, if you live in a big city and you have to put up with the noise, the traffic, the pollution, it's pretty easy to fall into that. Yeah, there's just too many people using up all the resources. But if you look at it coolly and logically, and let's look right now today in Hong Kong, the average living space is 1,700 square feet. Hey, if you had an apartment, 1,700 square feet, that's pretty decent size. It's bigger than most of the apartments I lived in. And based on 1,700 square feet, the entire 7.5 billion population of the world could live comfortably enough just in the state of Texas. That's true, and I've seen those statistics. But the West is dying and has a problem. We're having 1.3 children on average for two adults. you got to have 2.1 to even replace and take care of the folks or economies collapse. We know this. The third world is growing fast. They have dirty technologies. It is causing some problems. But they're suppressing, as you know, you've written books on it, a lot of advanced technologies that would have taken us out of this. Right. None the, none the least of which would be to pursue and move on into space, as we heard about when we were kids. Hey, Plus, humans need a goal. We'll, yeah. We'll go to the moon. We're going to have mine minerals. It'll pay for the space problem. We're going to have colonies on Mars, and we'll keep going. But and then you'd have to be a fan of humanity and not write us off. <laughs> That's right. And, and it's hard enough to control this world, <laughs> much less if you go into others. 
you wanted to get into glyphosate. You, you, I, I said, what's the most important thing in your book? And you said glyphosates. Uh, glyphosate, uh, even, uh, even the World Health Organization now has admitted that glyphosate is a carcinogenic. It can cause cancer. But uh, what I'd like to point out is that uh, they've showed that the rise of glyphosate use, which is the major ingredient of Roundup, which is the Monsanto herbicide, which they are putting now on all of our important food crops, soy, corn, uh, wheat, and uh, you can draw a parallel rise between the rise of the use of glyphosate and the rise of autism in children, which has just gone out. You know, that's shocking. Uh, I'm no chemist, but you mean lots of weed poison, hundreds of billions of tons being used a year, 400 billion tons a year now being used in every water table? Weed weed killer might not be good for our brains? Well, gee, I, poison? Uh, I, you know, it's... Whoa, that's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> uh, but now, I tell you, you want something shocking. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Sennett, a... Uh, a MIT research scientist who says that there is a definite link between glyphosate and autism. Definite link that crap stinks, yeah. Yeah, and she says that by 2025, that's just 10 years from now, she said at current rates, every other child yep. will be autistic. Well, I think that's, that's a, I mean, thank you, New World Order. Yeah. Well, and from their standpoint, that's pretty good because, hey, it'd be easy. By the way, that's only 10 years away. I know. And then half the new kids will be retarded. Yep. And they're like, oh, don't use the word retarded, but it's okay to kill them. <laughs> it's okay to brain damage them, just use the politically correct term. Okay, let me be correct. They're going to be seriously mentally disabled. <laughs> right. Now can we talk about... But it's okay. I mean... It's okay because they'll vote Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, you're something else. Uh, Jim Mars is our guest. Stay with us. Jim Mars is going to host the show. I told everybody that for about six years, I've been doing the show 20, it's been syndicated for 18 and a half. But for about 18 plus years, I've been on from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And for about five years, six years, it's about five and a half years, I did a fourth hour. But when I started doing the nightly news and getting a lot of crew members under me and have a lot of administrative stuff and research stuff, I shifted and stopped doing the fourth hour because it was just killing me. I mean, I literally had to go take a nap for like an hour afterwards. Three hours kills me, too. I think it's the bright lights or whatever. When I do it, the show at home every once in a while, and it's dark, I just feel great and want to go forever. It, it is. I'm, I'm actually thinking about sometimes just doing the show from home and having anchors in here that are covering the news just because people say that sometimes when it's not even video, they say, man, the show's even better when it's just old-fashioned radio. Maybe a day a week or something, I'm going to start doing that in the future. But long story short, absolutely. Uh, but uh, long story short, um, Jim Mars is going to be hosting 30 minutes of the next hour by himself in here. He's a great guy, smart guy. He can do the whole fourth hour if he wants because a lot of stations want that fourth hour. We are going to start having it be a guest host hour. I'll host it a lot of times as well. We'll have roundtable discussions. It'll be a news hour. It'll be really something special every day, that fourth hour. We're bringing it back. And some stations never turned it off when I quit doing uh, four hours two years ago. A lot of stations still carry it. So Jim Mars will be doing as much of the as much of the uh, fourth hour as he wants. In fact, I've, I predict you'll want to do the whole thing, Cupcake. Uh, so, so, so that's coming up. And if you want, you can give the number out and take calls. But yeah. uh, before I do that, we have to self-fund here. And I simply go out and whatever I use, what I like, what I think's neat, is what I end up trying to go out to the distributor, to the manufacturer, and get. G-Shock watches are the original tough watches, so they're the most state-of-the-art and the most updated today. Military uses them, everybody knows that. And they're also very, very affordable compared to other watches that don't even have the same tolerances. We now have a wide selection. We're adding them right now to InfoWarsStore.com of the G-Shock family. Uh, we have this distributorship through Head Down, uh, so we're now directly drop shipping through them. And we're carrying the Vortex Viper, uh, at the lowest price you'll find anywhere, uh, optics, uh, and just so many others. And and this thing is owned by former Special Forces, uh, Army, Navy SEALs, armorers, uh, laser sights, green laser sights, uh, AIM Titans, uh, Surefire, uh, all the very best stuff that is at the best price. Uh, just guaranteed no games for your assault rifle, for your handgun, for your revolver. It's all there, InfoWarsStore.com. You go over on the right-hand side, 
and you'll see InfoWars Live made in 1776, health and wellness, coffee, water purification, preparedness products, seed center, uh, books, uh, current specials, clearance, discounts, longevity, prisonplanet.tv, head down products, and now at the bottom, optics. So optics, watches, all the hardware you need, that way you get a great price, and the small profit that's there, wish it was huge profit, we could fund things easier, then helps fund the reporters, the research, the work we're doing. Infowarsstore.com or Infowarslife.com where you can go and find all of our high-quality supplements. And there are a ton of them. Uh, the latest, of course, is the deep cleanse known to cleanse out the body, Shilogy and other key compounds like zeolites, Knock out an amazing sleep aid where you just put all the best, purest stuff known to knock you out, better than a hammer. Uh, that's there. Believe me, I've taken other sleep aids that are natural. They help a little. Melatonin, uh, valerian, i got to take them together. This, I'm going to be taking this at night about 10 o'clock because i got to get up early tomorrow and do a bunch of stuff. And the thing is, I just, I just keep wound up. Even if I had that coffee since like noon, I just want to stay up till 2, 3 in the morning. And then I'm exhausted when my kids get up at 6, 30, 7 in the morning. Well, I can take knockout, and within an hour, man, I am sleeping deep, and I don't wake up. Even if the dog or the cat's jumping on me or the kids try to come in or th thunder and lightning or whatever. So InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free. We're going to answer all your questions about optics, about watches, about shortwave radios, cook stoves, water filters. It's basically I'm a guy, uh, you know, I, don't get me near a Cabela's. Don't get me near a, a hardware store. I'll be in a little town, see a little gun shop or a little hunting supply shop. I'm, I, I'm in there. Well, this is the very best stuff, and then you're not just getting some fun stuff for your for your cabin or your vacation house or your garage or your truck or presents for your kids, your husband or whatever. You're funding a hardcore liberty operation while getting your rifles ready for hunting or self-defense or whatever the case is. So it's all available at InfoWarsStore.com or InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, you have the floor and get practiced because you're going to be hosting the next hour, and you'll have some breaks to get up and go to the... Out of the Tinkle area, but uh, Jim Mars, my good buddy, best-selling author, is here with a new book, Population Control. And this is a book I can really get behind. You've had a lot of other amazing books, but I kind of know about JFK because I read your book 25 years ago. And you can write a book about the rise of the Nazis and how the Fourth Reich's connected to us, and I kind of know that. A lot of folks don't. This new book, I was reading through it, got a lot of stuff I didn't know, and it really puts it all together for the case. We ought to sell this ourselves. We don't yet. We saw a lot of your books and dovetail it with Endgame, because my film Endgame covers a lot of this as well, that their Endgame is take over, shut off the resources, and kill everybody. So, Jim Mars, people can go to your website and also get the book. Give them your website. Website, uh, oddly enough, is jimmars.com. J-I-M-M-A-R-R-S, two R's and Mars. A good Scottish name. Aye, correct, you are. Can you, can you do a Scottish accent for me? Uh, uh, no. We there are the buckins coming. I can't even do it. Oh, foot, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my god! I gosh. don't know. I think I lost my Scottish accent. Uh, <laughs> you you look like a Scottish guy, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Speaking of, <laughs> did, did you hear where there's a famous pub in Scotland and the, the managers announced they have a new policy that they're making the uh, waiters wear pants? Because this is true, really. Because too many women were coming in and trying to pull up their kilts <laughs> to see what they were wearing, mm -hmm. and uh, they said at first it was funny. He said, but, "I hear women go after the scotch <laughs> yeah. kilts." Yeah, that's right. There's nothing feminine about it. I mean, it's it's comfortable, manly kilts, absolutely. And then then I I could wear a kilt and then be on TV and get a Courage Award like Caitlyn <laughs> Jenner at ESPN. That's right. That's right. Hey, you could declare because you feel like it that you're a, a, a third gender. Wait a minute. I'm going to go to you in a minute. Can we pull up that I've announced I've come out of the closet? Can you guys pull it up? Uh, the video is Alex Jones comes out of the closet. Um, I, I've come out of the closet, but, but not that I'm a woman or not that I'm gay, but that not that I'm a space alien or a blood drinking lizard from the planet Pop-Tart. No, I've come out. Do we have the video ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to pull it up. I mean, it, it's in the system. I know I just sprung it on you. Uh, the video's on Infowars.com. Alex Jones has now come out of the closet. While they're finding it, what do you think this obsession with this stuff is? And is it about diverting from the fact that we're all losing our basic rights so the new right is that women can pee standing up? 
I don't know. I just, uh, to me, it's a uh, uh, proof of the uh, uh, psychological problem that they've noticed with rats. You know, uh, you put a few rats in a cage, they get along just fine. You put too many rats in a cage, they start going nuts and they turn on each other. And I think maybe that's it. There's too many people crammed together in and, and so people don't feel like they have a future. They don't feel like they can be creative. Used to, you wanted to explore, you wanted to invent, you wanted to build, you wanted to have art. Now it's, I'm going to have green arm hair. That shows that I'm mad at men. I'm going to pee standing up. I mean, I'm not joking. They have serious shows going, women are peeing standing up. This is the true feminism. <laughs> and it's just like, well, it's like, it's just stupid. Well, I don't care. Like uh, Bruce. Jim I mean, I'm going to freak out if I walk in the men's bathroom and that's going on. Bruce Jenner can call himself anything he wants to, but when it comes down to biologically, he's a man. And I did you see what they said on uh, CNN? The, 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 one of the co-hosts said, "I'll put you in a hospital if you say that again." Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. There, that's uh, that's tolerance. That see, that's, the left, uh, the leftists and the the crazies, they they practice tolerance, and if you don't want tolerance, they'll beat the crap out of you and put you in the hospital. And, and you know, I would think of you as a classical liberal. You're for drug decriminalization. You're for alternative energy. I mean, the liberals, you know, you know, really, you know, really like you, but you're not a fascist. I, I mean, you're not wanting to arrest. I mean, it's not that we care if some guy wants to be a woman. I don't want to pay for it. No, I, and I differ with you. I don't, I've never thought of myself as a liberal. I think of myself more as a conservative. But what it Well, I meant like a classical liberal yeah. like Thomas Jefferson. Well, that's it. It's like if you're conservative, what is it that you want to conserve? Uh, too many uh, so-called conservatives today, particularly the rhinos, you know, they want to conserve the status quo. And that's not me. What I want to conserve is the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the idea of freedom. Private property, do what you private want. Private property and equality. You know, I, you know when, the, when the Civil Rights thing came around, and I stopped and thought about it, and I was a good old redneck Southern Texas boy, but I thought, you know, they got a point. Why should somebody be discriminated against because of the color of their skin? I said, I'm backing off. I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to help them out. I, whatever, let's all just be equal. But, you know, it's, it's not even equal anymore. <laughs> Now, now it's reverse racism. And people just don't get it because, you know, I think everybody, if I say I'm going to vote for this person because he's black, okay, well, you know, that's just as much racism as to say I'm going to vote against I him. would vote for a black Ron Paul and wouldn't even think what color they were. Right. I, mean, I, I could literally, or a woman. But I'm they're going to make, if we don't want Hillary, that we're against women. Well, no, no, no. See, I, that's the same way. I, I have no problem at all with a woman in the White House. I just, not Hillary, because I don't think she qualifies. Well, yeah, because she probably actually is a man in drug. She's the reverse of Jenner. Well, No, yeah. actually, she is Jenner. <laughs> they're, generally speaking i'm being sarcastic you know the, you know they actually say that michelle is a is a tranny uh, they, yeah i heard that and I, I snickered that one off until i really looked at it seriously and she's got i think there's some question there you don't think that's like a cigar she's hiding in her pants <laughs> well it could be it could be she, she might just have saggy panties i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I don't want to go there. I mean, I'm still having trouble enough trying to tell people, uh, explain uh, the problem of two planes knocking down three buildings. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when they uh, El Chapo Jenner, it shot off like a missile and blew up building seven. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that makes as much sense. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. It's a family show. But this is what's <laughs> in the news. How do you not talk about it? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, if they're just force feeding all this garbage. Uh, we do have the video. So this is my coming out. I have become a dog, a oh. uh, a a uh, bloodhound. Right. I am trans species, and if you don't agree with it, then you're a racist. Here it is. But if you love your dog, you know, does Caitlyn that make Jenner is actually the real El Chapo. The problem is he hasn't actually done the chopping, so I say he's a fraud. But <laughs> me, I've gone and I've had surgery, and I've had these prosthesis ears added. <laughs> I am now choosing to be. Trans zoological, I believe is the term. I may just have to be transabled and chop my arms and legs off and uh, be known as a biscuit and live in a box. Be taken care of. And if you don't accept it, you're hateful. In fact, if you don't adopt my lifestyle and wear dirty brown socks on your ears after you work out, you're a racist, you're a homophobe, you're an anti zoological phobe, you're a piece of filth. So now I become my new self. <laughs> That's real, actually. You know, I saw the latest conspiracy. I think I sent it to Nico. 
Because what's it's sad that all these schizophrenics and mentally ill people that are now online, they have a voice, which is good. Everybody has a voice now. Sure. But now they don't just think I'm Bill Hicks. They think Rush Limbaugh is, wait for it, <laughs> Jim Morrison. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, that one is even better. Uh, that was a good one, Alex. Uh, I've got a fire hydrant out there I want to introduce you to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll love it. Love it first. You know, actually, since I put those ears on, I have been peeing on fire hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> and it's my right to do it. That's right. It's my right. And I, I deserve a courage award. There it is. Rush Limbaugh, a.k.a. Jim Morrison, was Bill Hicks, a.k.a. Alex Jones, influence to get on radio. So that's how it's all connected. I, I mean, look at this. And this is not satire. These people actually back it up, back it up. They actually, on this video, Show side by side and say Rush Limbaugh's Jim Morrison. <laughs> They're so crazy. Yeah, man. I know. How silly can you be? I mean, everybody knows you're actually Carl Rove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. David Mendelson. <laughs> Listen, I, I did this video where I said I was really a British thespian as a joke. People think it's real now. They're searching David Mendelson. Uh, That's the thing. They won't admit that glyphosate is connected to brain damage and that one. Half of the kids in the country by 2025 are going to be brain damaged. That's admitted and is epic. The government admits fluoride's brain damaging us now. Right. But no one will talk. Or they admit chemtrails are real. No one will cover the real documents. They just want to speculate. And then that's how the media tries to discredit us. You know, I'm just trying to cover up. I'm really, I'm actually Jim Morrison. <laughs> I'm insulted. I mean, I like Bill Hicks at some levels, but I think Jim Morrison as a musician was more interesting. So actually, I am Jim Morrison. Where you're being accused of it, you might as well uh, go for it. Uh. <laughs> oh, they're already connecting me. He says, "Our ah, Jim, Jim, we'll be spawns of Satan together." Guess we're talking about us. Well, you go ahead. Actually, are you really Jim Morrison? <laughs> you have to do something with your hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop. Start getting into your book. Get into the more serious okay. areas, and then you know, a lot of times we go out and have beer together. That's a lot of fun. That's right. And we look up at seven hours has passed? Hey, that would be your fourth hour right there. You just move to the local pub and, and sit around and have a few beers and then uh, just talk honestly. Please don't give me that idea. <laughs> That's actually, we've actually had that idea, but I've pretty much quit drinking to lose weight. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I only drink after six now. Uh, and, of course, it's always six somewhere on the planet. Well, maybe I'm being sarcastic. Maybe, I'm not a heavy drinker. If you're already <laughs> drinking six, maybe you ought to cut it down to two. I mean, I'd only drink at six. I, I, get it. I, oh, I get it cut from six to I, two. I got only it. have two at two and three at three and four at four and five at five and six at six. And Well, hey, take me. I don't drink any more or any less. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. No, we'll go have already. Mexican food and have a Dos Equis or two. There you go. I mean, let's be honest. We're not that cool. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, Anyways, I apologize, Jim Mars. You're here with your new best-selling book. That's right. Tell I'm us about it. No, listen, I, I'm serious about my book because uh, there's a lot of information in there of how you can protect your family and your loved ones because they, I mean, it, it, okay, we'll, we, when I get my chance, I'm going to tell you uh, about some of the really bad stuff that's going in everything, aspartame and, and monosodium. Blood. And most of our audience knows this. But they already know this. Their families don't. Exactly. And this way you can go, here's a prestigious author, Jim Morrison, Who's written this new book? You need to read it. But what I'm gonna what I'm gonna tell you is is that even the even the good stuff is bad. Uh, the uh, incidence of obesity in this country has shot up eighty five. Look how fat Jim Morrison got. Uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, he used to be really skinny. Now he weighs like four hundred pounds and hosts a radio show. I, I I say I hate to sit here and talk about obesity, but no. I, <laughs> Alex, actually, I think you've lost some weight. I really do. Thank you. I really do. Anyway. Well, I am still, here's the difference. In fact, I'm just going to take my clothes off on air. Let's just do it right now. Oh, no, please. No, 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 no. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, no, no. I mean, I'll just show people how much weight I've actually lost. I've actually lost almost 70 pounds. I believe but, it. But that shows how fat I got. Now I'm like 230. I was like 280. Well, I have all the admiration in the world for people that can actually gut it out. Well, I've been to the doctor and the nutritionist. I got 10 more pounds to lose. Wow. But the um, thing is, I have a really big, giant, round head. So no matter what I do, it'll always look like I have a big, fat head.
Kim Mars, you're going to host the entire next hour. You're going to take phone calls as well. Some stations don't carry the fourth hour, but they're welcome to. We're reintroducing it. We're going to start having guest hosts. I'll host it some. We'll have roundtable discussions. Jakari Jackson's going to host. Rob Dew's going to host. Um, David Knight's going to host. Uh, uh, Darren McBreen loves to do live. He's going to be hosting. Uh, we can have roundtable with the control room crew. They're really smart guys and gals. They're going to be in here. That's what it's all about. Three hours of pumpkin head, and then uh, you get uh, the garden gnome. See, he's calling me that names. I can strike back. Anyways, he, he actually is a little garden gnome in the corner of my garden. That's where he lives in my backyard. Jim Mars. Now, Jim Mars is a sweetheart. Your wife's back there. I want to say hi to her. You can take a bathroom break or get some coffee or anything you need during these breaks coming up. But some stations don't carry a lot. Do infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feed and audio feeds to see and hear that fourth hour. He will be serious for the first 20, 30 minutes. Please go over your book, break it down, and then take phone calls. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231 uh, to talk to Jim Mars. Uh, or Actually, he's really Rush Limbaugh, and then the Rush Limbaugh is really uh, Jim Morrison, and I'm really Rush Limbaugh. Uh, or I'm the Loch Ness Monster. So 800-259-9231 is the toll-free number to join us. But you wanted to talk about some good news during the break. Good news. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, consciousness is rising, but it's also creating a problem because the more people wake up, <laughs> the more the New World Order clamps down. Absolutely. Explain that to people. You're saying when you started doing this 50 years ago, you've been around that long. Yeah. In fact, you may actually be the real Gandalf. <laughs> uh, no, I'm Santa. <laughs> the, it's, you know, I'm not uh, actually that old, but uh, it's true. When I started off uh, and I'd be on radio shows or whatever, and I'd try to tell people, you know, there, there's a clique of people trying to run the world and uh, they, they're meeting in secret societies and they're trying to set the agenda and they're trying to run everything. And I'd get these calls coming in saying, hey, how do you let this guy on the air? You know, this guy's a nut. You know, this guy's a conspiracy theorist. This guy's a buff. And this guy's an idiot. You know what? The last 10 years or so, I don't get those calls anymore. I'm sure those people may still be out there, but they're keeping them to themselves. Well, you know, it was he classified uh, in congressional hearings many years ago that the CIA in the 60s started using that term. The Clintons in their uh, first presidential run, it's been released by their library. That they said anyone criticizing them, call them a conspiracy theorist. Oh, exactly. No, no, it goes back to 1954. Uh, no, no, no. 1967, I believe, after the Kennedy assassination. And there was a, a document uh, filed by the CIA's uh, Division of Intelligence and went to all their bases and all their assets. And if you know anything about Mockingbird, media. It went to the media and it said anybody that's questioning, the, basically, anybody questions the government, you call them a conspiracy theorist. And that's why it's interesting. I, I have a 1940 dictionary, and you go look up conspiracy, and it says a plan. That's all it was, a plan. Yeah, so if we ever talk about bad people having plans in government or corporations, it doesn't exist. Well, everybody knows it does. Of course. The, the, our legal system puts people in jail every year convicted of conspiracy. Ladies and gentlemen, in 70 seconds, we return with the fourth hour hosted by Jim Mars. I'm all right, folks, it's uh, Alex Jones here in the studio, and Jim's had 70 seconds to get ready for his premiere of hosting Syndicated Talk Radio, two millions of people. <laughs> but don't worry, the fourth hour probably only has about 500,000 people watching and listening, not a couple million like the main show, but uh, oh. not for long, because after we start hosting the fourth <laughs> hour, it's going to be huge. So, Jim, without further ado, you got a short segment of five minutes, you'll come back with 12 minutes, come back with six minutes, come back with 18 minutes, and come back with five minutes, and we got loaded phone lines from folks all over the world wanting to talk to Jim Mars. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Mars. Here he is, star of stage screen in outer space. And he's not kidding. I mean, I came here to speak with my friend Alex, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, I'm it. Uh, I don't know. I guess he had to go make a bathroom run or something. But uh, it is interesting, though, and I'm I'm happy to be here because, uh, especially since we can take calls, uh, because I'm always interested to find out what people want to know about. You know, I'm always making these talks, and uh, I watch carefully to see how many people get up and leave, and, and I'm gratified that very seldom do many get up and leave, so I guess they're interested in it. But I never really know what they actually want to hear about. So uh, here we have some calls coming in. But before we start taking the calls, I want to plug for uh, 
population control, how corporate owners are killing us. Uh, it, there's a ton of information in there, and it's information that you really need to hear about, about f bad food, bad air, bad water. Uh, let's talk about water for just a minute. One of the things that's being really a, a contentious issue today is uh, fracking. All right, and, and for those of you who don't know what fracking is, that's a short term for hydraulic fracturing. And what they do is they pump water with about 40,000 chemicals in it deep into underground to under high pressure so it'll crack uh, the earth and open up uh, these uh, strata down there in the deep underground. And the idea is because so they can bring out more gas and oil. And now this comes back to uh, a little thing known as peak oil, which I'm sure you've probably heard about if you don't understand it. And this goes back to the 50s uh, with a professor named Hubert, who somehow determined that by the year 2000, we were going to hit the peak of oil. Okay, and that's only so much oil because there were so many dinosaurs that died and plants that fell over and got compressed under the layers of the earth for billions of years and created fossil fuels and that there's only so much of it there. And when you get to a certain point, it's going to be gone. And he said that point was going to peak at the year 2000. And that's it. It's all over. Well, folks, that turns out to be another bogus theory. Okay. In 2011, 2012, oil and gas production were at, at higher rates than ever before. But the key thing is this. If somebody tries to tell you, well, no, we're running out of petroleum, we're running out of oil, here's three words you throw back at them. Back in rock formation, okay? B-A-K-K-E-N, the back in rock formation stretches up through Montana and uh, the Dakotas and into Canada and it is a vast, underground, untapped source of petroleum. And the experts have estimated that even at increased rates of consumption, there's enough uh, petroleum there to last us for 2,000 years. Holy cow. So, see, there's, there it is. And there's no reason uh, then to be pushing all of this fracking. Uh, because there's plenty of oil untapped. I also might mention, those of you who know your history know that uh, beginning of the 20th century, and I hear some music playing, so uh, we're, we're, all I was going to say is uh, early 20th century, you had the Teapot Dome scandal about oil, federal selling pr public oil pr privately, and that's still going on. we got a lot of oil. More right after these extremely... Excruciatingly serious messages. All right, there's some patriotic music for you. And uh, howdy, here I am, Jim Mars, your stand in temporary uh, host on the Alex Jones show today. S stuck with this last hour. I mean, pleased to have this last hour. But before we continue talking about the oil or the lack thereof, uh, let's take a quick break uh, to uh, for some breaking news from uh, our InfraWars reporter, Joe Biggs. Joe? Today, I actually got some information from a friend in Georgia. Now, he his son lives in Tampa, Florida. He roommates with a re recruiter at one of the local stations in that area, and he has given us information saying that they have been told to evacuate. Now, Don Salazar and myself have both called numerous recruiting stations without any answers. The phone will ring and or go to a recorded statement at that point. Now we have confirmed, though, we actually have a listener who has gone down to the numerous recruiting centers in Tampa, has taken pictures of empty offices. So this is happening due to a threat that they got for a shooter that could possibly happen. Now, earlier in the week, I spoke to a recruiter in South Austin who said that some of the offices in Las Vegas and Florida were getting threats of another attack. Now, this comes a week after the shooting in Chattanooga that left numerous Marines and a Navy sailor dead. So we've got to take this seriously. And I want people in that area, you know, to be on watch. And if you can, if you know anybody in those areas, call them, make sure they're okay. Find out what's going on and send us some tips. 
And just to add the point, good job to the citizen reporters going out there and being the eyes and the ears on the ground. This is the human intelligence of the American people and people of the world that can outmaneuver the mainstream media and the rest of them. They want to cover up what's happening in these recruiting centers and show the real terrorism threat in this country. They're obsessing still about two people dead in a movie theater as if it's the end of the world and making it a big deal while ignoring five dead. Look, all the deaths are important, whether it's people at a military facility or at a recruiting center or folks in a movie theater, but they're doing this to demonize the American people. Other points, we're going to throw it back to uh, to uh, Jim Mars, but, but great job for you and the team and Adon Salazar getting these reports out and to that citizen reporter. We're adding those photos, I'm told, right now confirming they're empty at those facilities. So, so they've abandoned their post. They've been told to evacuate and run up the white flag by the traitors in charge who won't let them be armed. And on top of that, they've already forced the Marine Corps recruiters to not wear their uniform and essentially wear civilian attire. Well, this is what we have to remember. Gun-free zones are kill zones. That's absolutely correct. Thank you, Joe. Thank stay, you. stay with it. Uh, yeah, I don't understand this at all. I mean, you have military men. These are men, uh, if there's anyone who could be trusted with a firearm, it would be a trained military man. And yet these guys are saying, oh, no, you can't take your gun and don't wear your uniform. Uh, folks, this is, uh, th well, all I can think of is un-American. And uh, also, back to our discussion, uh, they, during the break here, they brought me a copy of... Uh, of uh, Newsweek uh, from 1979, and in here it says, why we must act now, because it says, uh, 1979, we only have 8.7 years left of uh, petroleum, crude oil. That's it. We're going to be out, folks. And we've heard that for so long, and it's simply not true. There's oil everywhere. Plus, we do need to wean ourselves off of oil because we're killing ourselves on oil pollution you know, you realize, and I'm sure Alex has brought this up, that they're still spraying Corexit down in the Gulf of Mexico, and the, the Gulf is almost dead. Uh, we, you know, we got problems with Fukushima, and they're, they're still admitting they can't stop that radiation leak. In fact, uh, there is more and more evidence that the Pacific Ocean is uh, having all kinds of problems uh, because of this continuing radiation. And uh, what's our good government done about it? Well, as I understand it, they no longer monitor for radiation on the West Coast. Well, how convenient. Now they don't have to tell us how badly they're radiating us. So, but back to the water situation, before we go to the callers, and I am interested in, in getting calls, uh, I want to explain that not only is the whole idea of uh, fracking unnecessary because we do not need to uh, find even more uh, outlets for gas and oil. So uh, there's something else going on. And uh, what an increasing number of people believe is that this fracking is done for one major purpose, and that is to, uh, to adulterate and to destroy our water tables, okay? And why would, that, why would that be? Who would want to destroy our water? Well, right now today, in the world, there are about a handful of major corporations who are gaining control over the water supply. Uh, we find, uh, in fact, uh, water is so critical now in California that uh, Governor Jerry Brown uh, has announced uh, water reduction with fines, okay? They possibly can fine you up to $500 if you water your lawn. Uh, and, and what kills me is having been out there uh, I know I was visiting in Palm Springs, and uh, we went to a golf course there, such as the one you see here, and it was beautiful. It had sprinklers, you know, spraying. And then I find out that in Palm Springs alone, there's 125 golf courses. Now, here's 125 golf courses built in the California desert, you know, and that they all have to water the greens and the fairways and, and then wonder why they don't have, why they're running out of water. It's ridiculous. But then you also find that these wealthy families are uh, investing in water because, in fact, the head of the Dow Chemical was quoted as saying that water is the oil of the 21st century. And you have a handful of corporations, Nestle, Coca-Cola, uh, Perrier, who are gaining more and more control over the water. Now, you know, a person can go a few days without food and can still function. But if you don't have water, 
uh, you're in real serious trouble. And so then we look and we see that uh, the um, this wealthy elite, they are buying into the water industries. Uh, Warren Buffett, for example, is heavily invested in water treatment and water filters. Uh, T-Bone Pickens has bought up property all up and down the Oligala uh, Aquifer, which provides water for the uh, bread basket in middle America. Uh, but the one that really caught my attention was uh, some years ago, uh, it was uh, reported that the Bush family uh, had bought something like 300,000 acres in Paraguay. All right. And, uh, and knowing the background of the Bushes and the, the pro-Nazi stand of uh, the patriarch Prescott Bush, who was prosecuted uh, during World War II for being a front man, financial man for Hitler and the Nazis, uh, I thought maybe they were going to build a housing development and call it Borman Acres or something. But come to find out, the Bush family and their 300 acres in Paraguay it just happens to sit over the Garani Aquifer, uh, one of the largest single bodies of groundwater in the world. So they're, they're slowly but surely trying to gain control over the world's water supply. Now think what kind of power that would give someone. You want to drink a water? You pay what I say. In fact, and I've watched that just over my own lifetime. Uh, when I was 13, I went to work in a grocery store sacking, and then before long, I'd work my way up, and I was checking. In fact, I, <laughs> I worked in the meat department. I worked in the produce department. I got a pretty good grocery education. And if you had come to me at that point and said, uh, can you show me where the water is, I would have pointed you to the water fountain or to the hose outside. You turn on the faucet, and the water comes out. Nobody, nobody was buying water. You know, that was a considered a natural resource, and it was belonged to everybody. But then over the course of my life, I've seen all of a sudden there's been a section of uh, the drink shelf where you've got bottled water, and today you have an entire aisle full of water. And, uh, and if they don't get you th with the public water, just be sure and read some of the labels on the bottled water because they're already some of the bottled water is being fluoridated. And that's another thing I talk about in my book, Population Control, is that uh, in the 1930s, if you bought sodium fluoride, it came in a can and marked poison. Uh, but this is, what, uh, this is what they're giving you today. So uh, the whole purpose of fracking, I think, is to wreck the water tables. And you need to be aware of that. And we need to start cleaning up our water supplies. And we need to start um, uh, caring about what we're doing because we're, we're ruining uh, one of the most basic necessities of life. Okay, where are we? We've got a couple of minutes left. If you'll notice, I've been joined by uh, the Queen Mother of England. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, my friend Gator, <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think Alex caught him <laughs> uh, crawling around outside or something. He must be an infiltrator, but uh, he's been pretty passive for right now. I think we got time maybe for one call. Can we get a call sure, in here? Yeah, let's start with John in FEMA Region Five. Okay, we got John in FEMA Region Five. Howdy, John. Yeah, how are you doing, Jim? It's about time I got a chance to talk to you. I've uh, watched a lot of your videos uh, from the um, uh, Contact in the Desert series, and I go to your webpage occasionally. And uh, I was wondering if you could explain the actual cycle of the New World Order, starting with Babylon and the King Nebuchadnezzar, <laughs> and how it, it grows through a crescendo and then crashes and goes underground and comes up with different eras. Because I think if people start looking at it, you can see where it's coming from and where it's going. Okay. Well, you know, and let's see now. I've, I've got a minute or two, and you want me to give the history of the human civilization in the world. Okay. <clears throat> That's going to be a toughie. And in fact, I hear the music starting, so uh, while I try to compress world history <laughs> into a couple of minutes, uh, let's go ahead and cut for the break, and when we come back, uh, I'll trace uh, the New World Order back to its beginning. And uh, you're listening to your 
standby temporary itinerant transit host, Jim Mars, and uh, filling in on the last hour here for Alex Jones. And uh, we just had a caller, uh, John, who had asked, uh, you know, how did the New World Order start? And, uh, geez, we could, uh, you know, we could have three or four programs uh, talking about that. But let me point you to my book, Our Occulted History. And what you find is you go far back and even beyond our recorded history. And there are legends and stories in every ancient tribe and peoples in the world uh, from uh, the Aborigines in Australia <clears throat> to the uh, North American Indians uh, to the uh, Hindu Indians uh, in the Vedas to the Bible, Ezekiel in the wheel, uh, and to the some of the oldest writings in the world from um, the Sumar uh, civilization that uh, predated the Egyptians uh, over in uh, Mesopotamia. And uh, they all say the same thing, that uh, folks came from the sky and taught them uh, various things, uh, language, law, mathematics, garden, uh, farming, agriculture, and uh, to my surprise, even taught them how to make beer. Uh, <laughs> I uh, have, Being a, somewhat of a beer uh, fancionado, uh, I once tried to research it and find out, well, you know, where's beer come from? Uh, because after all, it's easy to figure out how ancient man figured out wine. You know, you got some grapes that fell off the grapevine, lay on the ground under a hot sun, fermented. <clears throat> the thirsty caveman came along, <clears throat> says, wow. He tries some of that, and he says, oh, and then he gets a buzz, and he's going, I really like that. So now he's got wine. But beer, beer? You have to have malts and hops and various things, you know, and and then you have to mix them in just the right proportion, and you have to add water, and then you have to have some sugar, and then it's all got to ferment a certain amount of time. I mean, this is a uh, uh, this is a complicated formula. How did somebody figure all that out? Well, according to these ancient tablets, these uh, cuneiform tablets left by these ancient Sumerians, they're the people that came from the sky. Their gods, if you will, taught them how to make beer. And they had four different kinds of beer back in uh, the ancient ancient world, okay? And something tells me one of, one of those types was probably not light beer. <laughs> they probably had something else. But the point is, is that uh, they all tell the story that there were these outsiders who came and set us on the course to civilization. Now... These outsiders, they didn't want to have to mix with the, the raggle-taggle humans, so they created kingship. They created interlopers. They created a priest caste uh, that, would, uh, in, that would pass along and deal directly with the humans. Uh, and over a period of time, these gods dropped out of sight. And the whole idea of, uh, of people... Uh, and their gods, it, it turned into a metaphysical thing. You, you didn't see God, but we all know he's there. And then the priest caste, they were getting rich and powerful, uh, you know, by representing God. God told me to tell you, here's how you're going to live. And they didn't want to give that up, so they built a whole system of catechisms and theologies and et cetera, et cetera. And so for the longest time, all the way up through the Middle Ages, the human uh, humans were pretty much governed uh, by religion, okay? But with the advent of the printing press and with science uh, and with uh, the, uh, uh, the new turnover and the uh, age of uh, enlightenment, uh, the power of religion began to wane and they moved into finance. You're going to break in a moment. I just want to say you're doing a great job. Are you, are you going to continue on with calls in the next hour? You bet. Wait, look who's going to be here with you. She's interviewing you on the nightly news tonight. Oh. <laughs> Leanne Magadou. Jim Leanne. Mars was just about to give the secret of the universe. That's right. And I just decided you've already been attacked by an alligator. <laughs> I thought it was Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, Queen Elizabeth already barged in on you. But wait, wait. He's a crown. So, yeah, so, where's the crown? 
You're going to break. I'm going to come back and take more calls. <laughs> Would you like Leanne to co-host with you live? Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> he didn't ask to do that. I'm just kind of making it fun. If it's your first time hosting live radio, you're an old hand at this. I thought I would make it as fun as possible. Right. Next, we're going to have monkeys swinging on Shang and Aliris. It, it'll be more fun if there's more people. The more... I'm gone. We're I'm on gone. the march. <laughs> the Empire's on the morning when the sun That's right. Shine. Too many of us owe our soul to the company store. I believe that was uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford telling us about uh, owe our soul to the company store. Okay, this is Jim Mars. We're back here on this uh, last segment of the Alex Jones Show. Uh, and I got I got totally off in the left field trying to explain about how the secret society started. So I'll try to make this quick. Uh, after they, uh, the the key mechanisms for controlling humans have always been religion and then finance, and today it's mostly finance. But uh, if you've been keeping up with Alex, if you've been keeping up with some of the other people, the the financial situation is getting very shaky. So um, keep an eye on that because uh, uh, you know I think we're we're coming up on a time period that's going to make 2008 look like a, just a, a bump in the road. Uh, let's move on and, and find out, uh, from more callers. Have we got a caller? I think Chuck in Arizona was next. Hey, Chuck in Arizona. Are you there? Hi, Mr. Mars. How you doing? I'm tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, how are you? Doing swell. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, let, me, let, me uh, let me, let me introduce, let me introduce Leanne McAdoo here. I got thrown here in the in the hot seat with Alex Jones. He likes to. This is this is what this fourth hour is all about now. Surprises. <laughs> actually, actually, she's there, so you have something good looking to look at. <laughs> You've got the nice voice. <laughs> okay, Chuck, what do you got? Form. Will this be an overdrive form on uh, YouTube? Uh, I believe so. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. Because that's the only way I get to watch you guys and listen to you guys. So, uh, real quick, I want to make uh, four points. First one, most important. I think we need to have a push for national sovereignty. Every citizen needs to become a sovereign citizen. If you do this, it binds you to the Constitution, which is the law of the land. This, in turn, will hold the police's feet to the fire and make them act properly to make the judicial system work the way that it's supposed to work. Now, if you do that, we've always been told all problems start at home. If we start at the base program and we work our way up through the judicial system, we can further work our way up into politics to make these politicians act like they are supposed to act because they work for us. Okay. So, second, so, Chuck, you, you say that we, we need to become sovereign citizens and we need to vote on representatives who will actually represent us. And uh, if they don't, then we need to vote them out and uh, start all over again. And might I point out that uh, that's not a radical idea. I hate to tell you, this is the way it's supposed to be, okay? <laughs> but it, it's gotten away from us. And so what you're saying is, and I totally agree, is that we need to go back to basics, which is we are all sovereign citizens and we're all operating together. And I also hear you about starting at a local level. This is most important. Uh, I've pretty much given up on the federal level. Uh, the federal, it, Washington is so corrupt, so bought and paid for, that uh, I think it's going to be near impossible to try to actually just change it around. What we can do is go to the local level. Uh, get on the school board, get on the city council, get on the county commissioners. And then when the feds come along and say, okay, here's what you're going to do. Just say no. Exactly. Right, Leanne? Well, that's what we'd like to do. But, I mean, here we've got the federal government uh, just passing well, the House, is not, you know, voting on that Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act. And they don't care that the states want safe labeling. They don't want care that the states, you know, want GMO foods labeled. Well, that's it. They ride roughshod over us on everything. And it's not, not necessarily always the feds. Uh, up there near where I live uh, in Denton County, uh, some thoughtful people got together and they actually passed an ordinance saying they could not do any fracking in Denton County. And what happens? Governor Abbott of the state of Texas rams through a law that says you can't pass laws in locally that wow. prevents business from doing things. You know, what about freedom and democracy has he not heard about? 
Right, or we got a Chris Christie saying if he becomes president, he's going to treat all of the diseased pot smokers with some federal law enforcement there. I mean, just totally bypassing the fact that states have voted on this, that medicinal marijuana, they're okay with it. So That's like, right. And by the way, you can read about that in my new book, uh, Population Control, because I kept a close eye on Washington State and on Colorado, where they have legalized not only medical marijuana, but recreational marijuana. And you know what? Guess what? Their taxes have uh, the tax income, you know, their profits have gone sky high. Their traffic facilities have dropped. Crime has dropped. It's obviously only the reasonable, prudent thing to do. Hmm. Well, was all that right, all? Ready for another had? caller? Yeah, let's Is go it? to the next caller. Who we got? We've got Mark in California calling from KOMY 1340 AM. He'd like to discuss the Franklin cover-up. Hmm. Oh boy! Okay, <laughs> Mark, what have you got for us? Well, I have Doug Millar for you. He's worked with the senator for 25 years, and uh, there's only about uh, 10. A real heroes, and uh, Doug Millar is one of them. He, he's like 77. He got arrested up there in Bohemian Grove. And the guy, Doug Millar, is just a wealth of information. And uh, if you or Alex would like to interview him, he, he is available. Okay. All right, we can have get his information from you after we get off the air. There you go. Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking into anything and everything, and... If this has to do with the Franklin cover-up, I might point out that this is a huge scandal going on in the U.K. right now mm -hmm. about child pornography and uh, child abuse. Uh, and they, they are trying to keep this as quiet as possible, but uh, it needs to spread over here because uh, going back to the Franklin cover-up and to all of these allegations uh, that some of the uh, most powerful people in this country are involved in uh, child abuse and child pornography, uh, this is this is serious enough. We need to start dealing with that, too. Absolutely. It goes all the way to the top. Okay, right, do we have another call. caller? Let's go to Dwayne in Wisconsin. He'd like to discuss population control. <laughs> oh, population control. Perfect. That's my new book. Let's discuss that. <laughs> What's on your mind, Dwayne? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mars. Uh, real pleasure to have you hosting the show. Uh, also, Le Leanne. Uh, yeah, I thought it was only fitting to to title my my little segment here, uh, "Population Control," as as your new new book is aptly titled. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Um, I just wanted to run through a, a few things real quick, kind of rapid fire, and then you can give me your commentary on it. Uh, you know, it's pretty clear our Second Amendment has shifted from the right to protect yourself from individuals and in government to a means of destroying the Constitution. You know, it's just like being politically correct. You know, brainwashed people think it's about respect for others and, you know, not hurting people's feelings. But it really truthfully has a lot more to do with restricting our free expression of thoughts and killing the First Amendment. I mean, this is a hypothetical question, but how offended would the general public be if the Humane Society was caught harvesting kitten and puppy fetuses and selling the parts for profit? I see a lot more posts on Facebook about caring for animals and adopting them than I ever do about prenatal care for unborn children and adopting kids. Now, it comes down to this indoctrination, you know, through rampant implementation of thousands of sustainable development policies. Sustainable development, which of course is newspeak for Agenda 21. That Agenda 21, which Salon.com likes to call an Alex Jones construct. Well, if Agenda 21 <laughs> is an Alex Jones construct, why is it cited by name in our Federal Register, Volume 63, Number 163, Monday, August 24th, 1998, under linkages to other initiatives? Oh, uh, is that evidence you, and proof of oh, conspiracy? Yeah, you, you've been doing your homework. Uh, <laughs> how dare you hit them with facts? Right. <laughs> By the way, uh, it, it, it's really incredible to me uh, over the years, all of this ar argument over uh, uh, birth control and particularly over abortion. Uh, it, what I find interesting is that most of the anti-abortion people who, I, number one, I feel like their heart is probably in the right place, but where's their mind? They seem very concerned about these unborn babies, and yet, when these kids are born in the third world countries and in China and in Iran and in Iraq and in Afghanistan and in our own country, they don't seem to care about the ones who are already living and breathing, 
you know, they they in in fact the big dichotomy is is that I think you'll find that most people who are anti-abortion are pro death penalty. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, let's let's save the babies, but then if they turn out bad, well, we'll execute them. Right. We have the Black Lives Matter protesters out there who were offended that we were daring to point out how many black babies are aborted by Planned Parenthood every year. And she, one of them actually said, I kill my kids. So you're absolutely right about that. I mean, and, and actually they're not allowed to be called babies or fetuses or anything. Uh, they're called products of conception. That's yeah, Mars, you're a product of conception. <laughs> You up. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, that's uh, the, the Nazis did that. They call it retroactive birth control. <laughs> but you know, speaking of, okay, here I got to tell you, my idea on abortion. That is a true controversy, and I call it a true controversy because I think there are equal numbers of thoughtful, caring, educated, knowledgeable people who simply cannot agree. Okay, on when life starts and how important. Blah blah blah. Okay, so. Why is there any problem? Freedom. Anybody ever heard that term? Uh, freedom. Uh, you, you're free not to have an abortion. You're free to have an abortion. Nobody can make somebody do something else. It'd be up to the, the woman, to her doctor, to her family. This is when the censorship begins. Oh, but that's not politically correct, is it? It's not around here. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm, we did I'm not just teasing you, Mars. Don't tell us how great abortion is. Now, listen, I get that for a lot of people, it is about having a child they can't take care of, but they got raped or... Or they were doing drugs and their friends can be brain damaged. Or there's medical issues. The whole point is what's driving and promoting it, though, is the eugenics-based system. Yes. And so I don't want to hear about how, you know, cops kill, you know, however many black people every year. It's not even 100. It's, it's terrible. Some of it's wrong. Sometimes, you know, they're in the wrong. Sometimes the cops are in the wrong. About these lives matter when then the blacks are being targeted for extermination. You know, with the whole Margaret Sanger deal. So that's my angle, separating those two. They make the whole compendium and the taxpayer funding of Planned Parenthood about, uh, you know, a woman's choice. Well, then fine, don't make me pay for it. You know, there's so many layers right. to this. Then it's not a federal issue. See, my hair's even sticking up. I don't even know I'd be in here. Both of them. Both of them. <laughs> They got both of them. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Anyways, goodness. You like the new show, Leanne? Fourth huh? hour spiraling. Hey, uh, hey put, can you put the, the slide on with Margaret Sanger and Hillary Clinton? That's a hoax. Salon says it's a hoax. She's not uh, It's not a hoax. She loves Here, the babies. It, it, no, break. It's a hoax. Yeah, Hillary there we Clinton. go. Uh, Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, says colored people are like human weeds and need to be exterminated. And uh, we find Hillary Clinton is a big supporter. I admire Margaret Sanger enormously, her courage, her tenacity, her vision. Go to this. So I guess Hillary has that same vision. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Gator man here. Gator Feed me, man. baby. Uh, Steve it's Irwin. liberal. Steve Irwin. Hillary He's Clinton's a guest today on the show. Risen from the dead. Feed, feed me, Seymour. <laughs> what are you, racist against alligators? You afraid to have our first alligator president? Uh, a trans alligator <laughs> gender change. Uh, you like the fourth hour? Fourth Anything hour can happen here. Crazy fourth hour, I'll tell you. Come on, let's go. Who, uh, is Dwayne still on the line? Dwayne is no longer on the line. Okay, who we got next? Next, we have Robert in California. He'd like to discuss global elite mental illness. <laughs> global elite <laughs> mental illness. They literally are well, mentally that, era. Yeah, that's true. Years of inbreeding will do that to you. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's what happens when you go to those Bohemian Grove meetings. <laughs> okay, uh, Robert, uh, out in California, uh, you're probably hot and dry out there. Uh, tell us what's on your mind. Yeah, all the uh, chemtrails are just uh, drying up all that water. <laughs> uh, Jim, Leanne, and Alex Jones in the background. This, my question is this. Uh, with all of our elites being crazy and wanting to kill us, and obviously our representatives are not representing us, and their mentality, uh, they're, they're unstable, uh, being very questionable about that. Why are we playing footsies with crazy people? Well, uh, basically because they have their hands on the purse strings. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're absolutely right. And that's why uh, that's why we need to uh, get those people to step down. And uh, we need to do something different. And, uh, and, and like I said earlier, I, I, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do very much at the national level. Uh, 
Mm -mm. Um, but uh, locally, you can see that you people who think the same way you do, people who know the same things you do, get into office and start taking the steps necessary to straighten things up. In other words, you pack your city council with knowledgeable people who care about the health and safety of your community, and they're going to take a hard look at fluoridation and probably decide not to quit fluoridating the water and involuntarily medicating you. Right, or even we have our governor here in Texas who stood up with this Jade Helm exercise and said, right. well, my constituents are concerned, so I'm going to go ahead and... Just make sure the National Guard keeps their eye on them. Make sure they're not violating their Exactly. Rights. And the, what really shocked me, well, not really, but considering the political correctness idiocy that's going on, but the reaction of people uh, in the mass media and, and in the other parts of the country acted like some big terrible thing was going on. All, all, all Governor Abbott said was he was going to tell the Texas State Guard to just watch and monitor and see what they were doing. What's Do wrong job. with that? And that's only prudent, particularly when a good number of people are uh, concerned <laughs> about what's going on. And speaking of Jade Helm, have you noticed the wooden clog in the middle of it? Yes. A lot of people wondering kind of what, what that is. A well, I can tell you what that is because having written a book called The Rise of the Fourth Reich, which is how the Third Reich Nazis were simply brought over here after the war, rolled into our military industrial complex so that we would hopefully get our edge on the, on the Russians. Uh, I immediately saw that wooden clog on the, in the center of the Jade Helm 15 logo, and I immediately thought that the Nazi concentration camps uh, when you were sent in there, they put you they put you in striped pajamas and gave you wooden shoes. So to me, it's a symbol of a concentration camp. And my question would be, why is there a symbolic uh, thing of Nazi concentration camps on the official logo of this military exercise uh, in the United States in 2015. And that's interesting because it's transparent. It's a little hidden. It's almost like yeah, the invisible. It, yeah, it's almost camp. like here's a little hint for you. Right. That you, you don't realize it's being built up all around you with the geospatial mapping and everything that we've gotten into as well. That's well, and, and of course, their logo says master the human domain. Whoa. What's the human domain? Just about everything anything to do all. with a human, right? Absolutely. And they're going to master it. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well on their way. Yep. <laughs> I hear music. All right. Well, stick around. We got a, We're a almost short done. segment for you. Yep. Hang in there, Coming Leanne. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so this is the final segment. Take a few final calls. I want to thank Leanne McAdoo. I want to thank the great Jim Mars, our wonderful crew, including uh, Nico and the rest of the fine folks in there, like, like CJ and Wesley and just everybody. So great job. Have a safe uh, weekend coming up, and we'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. we got five minutes left of transmission. I leave you with Mr. Mars and Mr. McAdoo, our dynamic <laughs> Scottish duo. <laughs> Ms. McAdoo. Did I say Mrs.? You said Mr. Mr. McAdoo. That's right. That's the new conspiracy. Alex Jones admits Leanne is a man. That's it. No, you, you exposed it. It's true. I'm. I am Bill Hicks. Rush Limbaugh is Jim Morrison, and you are Lee Man. I don't believe it. Ms. Leanne McAdoo. I don't think anybody's gonna believe you're really a man. They don't. It's it's not true, folks. Tell them about your courage and just admit the truth. <laughs> And they're doing the work of <laughs> two men, Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> All right. We're back. We're going to take one more call. Uh, we're going to who? Chris, Chris in North Carolina. He'd like to discuss the Georgia Guidestones. Okay, Chris, what's on your mind? Yes, sir. Thank you, first and foremost, for your service. I appreciate it. I serve, too. And my question is, is... Uh, I know they put a 2015, I think it was 2015, uh, block on the Georgia Guidestones, and I was wondering what you think about that because Alex Jones has, has talked about how he feels in his gut some impending doom, and a lot of people have talked about it. But now they put it on the Georgia Guidestones, and, you know, R.C. Christian is just a face name for somebody else with – probably with the New World Order. And I wonder what you think about it because you're, you're pretty much a big researcher on the Georgia Guidestones. That's right. In fact, I cover the Georgia Guidestones here in my new book, uh, uh, Population Control. And, uh, of course, uh, what you find 
is the very first admonition is maintain uh, human uh, population on the world to 500 million. Well, again, right now it's 7.5 billion. So uh, what are they going to do with the other 7 billion of us? Uh, and also, uh, the fact that they put 2015 on there uh, is only just adds to the accumulation of evidence that, I mean, you talk to some of the uh, financial people, they say, get out of the stocks, you know, run for the hills. Mm -hmm. You hear uh, military people going, uh, you know, they're, they're, they are purging the U.S. military of people who uh, are pro-Constitution. Uh, they're uh, the Pacific Ring uh, the volcano activity, it, it's, it's heightening up. The, uh, the uh, Yellowstone caldera is long past time that it could explode. I mean, there's so many, ne never mind asteroids coming in. Mm -hmm. There's just so much going on that it, it really is pretty creepy right now. And so I would, I would advise keeping your eyes and ears open. And, and, and just as a matter of prudence, maybe there's a hurricane or maybe there's a tornado. Get yourself some food, some water, and have some supplies. Listen to Alex Jones. Uh, he tells it like it is. And he will keep you apprised as things start to happen. Okay, Leanne, tell Please. us about the news tonight. Well, first, I just wanted to say with the Georgia Guidestones, how bizarre that they always had that slot where, where something was going to be put. And then, lo and behold, someone updated it this year with the 2015 stone. Right. That was bizarre because I never even had noticed that. Well, but. and just like the rest of the, those stones, including this Mr. Christian who summoned them, it's all very mysterious. Nobody seems to know, and nobody seems to be able to tell us exactly what all this is. But it, to me, it's quite obvious that it ties into mm. uh, futuristic thinking. Absolutely. Well, we're going to be talking about that on the news tonight, the Disclosure Project. So can't wait to get that out for everyone. Disclosure. We're going to disclose. <laughs> And that's disclose, not unclose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tune I hear in. the music. We're 7 heading out. 7 p.m. Central, the nightly news. Leanne yeah. McAdoo. I'll be hosting. You did a great job. Tomorrow. Okay, Alex, you did a great job. We may keep you on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll think about it. Jim Mars.